Welcome back to Shabby Shack Studio, where we're all about imagination, keeping our, our budgets low and our tutorials beginner friendly, and um, creating just straight from the heart. Watercolour gift cards have been super popular in the past, and as we are about to hit Valentine's Day, this being the month of love, I thought we would do something a little bit different, stepping away from the standard roses and we would create two gift cards and they're all about the year of the rabbit and some beautiful daisies. Being budget conscious as always, I hate waste and I use this really beautiful 300 GSM watercolour card for some of my previous blooms when we were doing the lilacs the roses and the daisies on our previous tutorial. And when I cut those lovely little blooms out for the cards, I found I had all these scraps. And I didn't want to throw them away because they're actually quite large pieces. So as you can see, I've just simply picked up random pieces and I started creating my daisies on those. With a very inexpensive acrylic brush that you can see me using there, that's a size 10. Um, I did pick this one up at a market store when I was holidaying overseas. It literally is like two euro. It was super cheap. Um, it has a nice fat belly that holds lots of paint and it's lovely fine tip so I don't need to switch between my brushes. Um, I do have lots of others that I like but this is the one I always seem to go to when I'm, um, when I'm painting. It's just, I guess it's my happy place. So you can see the sweet little half pans there scattered around as I'm painting. All you need are four colours for this collection of cards. Um, a yellow ochre, the sepia, sap green and little Payne's grey. And of course lots and lots of fresh water. Okay, so I do lay my colours down in a certain order because I like the sepia to be allowed to kind of blend and bloom into that sap green on my palette. Um, before I add that into my actual artwork. It just creates this whole range of lovely muddy sage greens that I can then use. And then the sepia and the yellow ochre, again, I allow them to do the same. If you've been here for more than a moment, you know that I have a very loose, uh, sketchy style. I have just, on, I have done some really faint pencil sketches of my little daisies. So I picked up all my scraps, you're gonna see them all sitting next to each other in a moment. Um, and they just look pretty as a picture. Um, but I did pick up a, a pencil and just do some faint lines, just to kind of think the positioning, because I wanted some facing left, some facing right, some reaching to the sun. I wanted little buds that were starting to open like this one. Some really tightly closed little buds, just just a whole range of blooms so that when it came to layering them, and if I don't want to give too much away, but when it came to layering them on my card, it was going to create just this wonderful flexibility for me. So I did add um, some leaves to some um, and others I left them without. And as you can see, all were created with a lovely long stem. Um, and you'll see why in just a moment. Um, this, this was actually a really fun project and it's something that you create, could create over a couple of days if that suits you. Um, that way it kind of loosened up that I wasn't worried about time frames. I actually just put on a favourite movie and I painted all of the little daisies in one go. Um, so it was nice because once you mix your paint up you don't want to waste it and get yourself in a comfortable position and you're in the flow. So it's just lovely to just go through all the different kinds and, and have have fun and enjoy, just totally enjoy the moment. So it's probably much easier to create more. Um, it, it also means that you could always pop them away like I have. And if I decide I'd like to create another card in future, then it certainly allows me to do that because I could just um, grab some cardstock and, and do a quick sketch and I already have all the blooms done. I really allow myself the opportunity to um, explore each bloom in every facet of its life cycle. Um, to me, flowers, no matter what flower I'm painting, they're just beautiful from the time that they're a bud and they're just starting to bloom to the time when they're fully open and then when they're starting to wilt at the end. So I'm trying to catch 
these sweet little daisies in in just like all of those um, all of those facets of, of the, their life cycle um, and this kind of the soft and the fragility of the petals etc so you can see that um, they're quite wet when um, I finished and I pop it to the side and just allow it to dry and allow the color to fade as it does and then I'll come back some with some wet in dry and add a little bit more oomph for a little bit more drama if I'm feeling like it's a bit washed out so you're gonna see me switch between uh, three of the blooms I create for you here live um, and then you're gonna see the page at the end where they're all together um, and there's just every different kind um, and then I just get to choose my favorites um, for my project and um, I have so many to choose from so I, I have more than enough whatever um, whatever direction I need them to sit in or whatever so um, and then if I have any extras left over I'll just pop them aside and it means that I can make more cards in future so they're never going to get wasted. I hope if you're a beginner or whatever skill level you're at, you find um, my videos helpful or even just enjoyable. I hope they inspire you. I, my aim is to to inspire you to create um, whatever level of skill you have and whatever your budget. Um, I don't go into too much detail, I guess, because I, I'm my painting style is so casual and loose. Um, that it's self-explanatory to a degree. Um, I don't necessarily use, um, I don't switch between brushes and I don't get too bogged down with brush strokes. Um, I, I, I do what, what just feels natural um, and I, I really don't um, overthink my style when I'm creating something. Um, and then I just go back and I let the bloom speak to me. Um, and I have said before, I don't paint I rarely, rarely ever paint from an image or even from um, a flower that's in front of me or a still life that's in front of me. These are 100% from my imagination. Um, from the pencil sketch right through to the finished article. Um, even my cards, I don't do um, all my projects. I don't do a trial run and then show you best. Um, my projects are 100% created with you so when I call this a, a paint with me or a create, create with me. I really am just creating it with you. And um, quite often I'm just as surprised as you are how it came out in the end. And my general thought process is just to keep playing. Keep playing and keep adding a bit of color, a little bit of stroke in or remove some color if I need to. And just keep going until I'm happy. Um, I don't have the thought process I'm gonna throw it away um, and nor that it has to be perfect by a long shot. Um, I just have the process and the thought the thoughts that I'm doing it and it's joyful and it makes me happy so I hope that you create um, in whatever capacity you have and you don't let anybody criticize you or encourage you to or, or want you to stop because you feel like your work isn't good enough that it just makes me cry to think that that happens okay so as you can see all my little blooms now are scattered there and they're perfectly imperfect and then I've just picked up um, my sweet little scissors there and I'm cutting them out, just leaving, um, it's just been quite spare with how much paper I leave around them because then it will give me lots of flexibility when it comes to the creative stage, which is this part. So this one is quite simple. I've just created an envelope and envelope super easy to sketch. So very simple pencil line. I've gone over that with one of my favorite pigment liners, which is the Stablers. I like the uh, 0 0.2 and the 0 0.3. They're my favorites, depending on the cardstock I'm using, if I feel like I want something finer. I am working on a 280 GSM cardstock. This is not watercolor paper now. Um, I do add a little bit of watercolor in a moment, and you've seen me create without watercolor paper. So um, for me, it's, it's all about being creative and giving yourself permission um, without necessarily having expensive products or sometimes even the ones that you, that you know, everybody says you should use. Okay, so we're just adding a little sketch in here. That was the envelope with love. And now this is the second card. 
some bunny loves you so this is the little valentine's bunny um, and I wanted to celebrate the year with a rabbit at the same time so I thought you know what everybody's doing hearts and, and uh, roses so let's do something a little bit different so this is just a little bunny that I've sketched um, I actually use the, the same profile in my Bujo so if you journaling is something you've been wanting to investigate or something that you're passionate about um, do go and have a look at that one I will link it for you below um, as well as all the tools um, and things that you'll see like you see my um, tablescape my flat lay there um, so I will link that my scissors my textiles that you can see that kind of thing this sweet little pottery tag made by a favorite potter of mine Marley and Lockyer I'll link her site for you below because you will just love her stuff um, so here we are I'm just adding in the um, font now again this is just a hand lettering that I've done I'm actually thinking about doing maybe a topography um, video so do let me know if that would be something that would interest you um, I have had quite a few requests um, online and in person so um, I think that might be something that would be worthwhile to do Okay, so you can see me adding in the little grass, the little meadow that our bunny is, is sitting in. Some blooms. I wanted to do a couple of the little daisies just in black and white as well. Just for another element, another layer. Um, so I've, I'm doing that now. And as you can see, it's so super easy to do those. Give your, le your pen a, a wiggle for the petals and the leaves. And I mean, my grass is literally a scribble. Um, but for me, it just feels so much like a little meadow of weeds and, and long grass that a bunny would be hopping through. So it's so easy um, and relaxed. Okay, so just adding in a couple more of my little daisies. I am um, not doing the daisy that the bunny is holding in its mouth. It's purely there that when I was working out my scale and how everything was going to sit, it was purely there to kind of a placeholder because that is where one of my little watercolour daisies is going to be. Okay, so now that our watercolour and sketching phases are done, we're moving back to our actual creative stage. So just picking up my craft knife, you can do this with or without a ruler, whatever you're most comfortable with. And I'm just going to cut um, through the seam there where the envelope would actually be open because this is where I'm going to poke my sweet little watercolour daisies. I want to put the stems through here so that it looks like you're opening an envelope and what's inside is not snail mail um, or happy mail. It is actually an envelope full of love, full of blooms, just um, would be just the prettiest thing to receive. So do take care with your craft knife if you're doing this with children. Maybe this is something that mum and or dad can help with or you could even just do a very small portion of it and then use scissors for the rest so it's up to you now you can see that this card it has got holes punched in the side and the card is not folded in half that's because I decided um, as part of my 
February bullet journal that I would use this one as my cover my cover um, page for February and then I would turn the other one into a card as well but obviously you can see how this could be very simply be a card you could fold an A4 piece of paper in half and it would be an A5 card um, once it's created or you could do the same with an A5 piece like I do with the bunny and you would have um, plenty of space for a nice little card um, so there you can see it. I've just play around with my little blooms until I'm happy with how they're sitting. Um, it's very easy to do once you've got that um, the cut there. It's very easy to pop those blooms through and just picture how you would like them to sit. As you can see the leaves and the stems and the flowers going all different directions. And then I've just used a little bit of double sided tape to secure the flower head in place. And I'm going to come back and line the back in just a moment. Okay, so now you've seen me move over to my my little bunny that is giving a bloom to their love. And I'm just going to carefully cut where the bloom is going to sit. So it's effectively going to come in and then out the other side, as you can see when I'm holding it. So I'm just carefully cutting underneath the little bunny's mouth where it would be. Um, and just very gently, so I'm not marking the card or bending it, poking that craft knife through just to tidy it up and make the lines a little bit, um, the cuts a little bit cleaner. And then here I am doing underneath because that's going to pop back through there when I'm done. Okay, so then I'm simply just thread the little stem through um, and out the other side and it's going to have... This little bunny is going to be giving a little daisy to his bunny love. Okay, and then I just thought, you know what, it needs a little bit more daisiness, a little bit more cuteness. So I decided to put a couple little more cuts in just at the ground level um, and have some blooms popping up around the bunny from the grass. So for me, I decided that it needed a little bit of extra something. So now that my daisies are in place, I decided I'm going to come back and ink in the lettering. Um, again, somebody who loves you. I just felt that it was too stark. It needed to have a little bit more oomph there um, so that the little bunny and the um, detail below stood out. Um, so I've just tidied up that lettering. It's also good too if you feel like you want to smooth out edges. Filling it in means you can go back and fiddle all you like. And then again, I thought, you know what, I could add a couple more little blooms in here and it would be just as sweet as can be. Okay, um, then I decided I wanted to add a little bit of colour. This kind of looked at it and kind of spoke to me and I thought, you know what, maybe I'm going to add a little pink nose and some little pink ears and a little pink chest. So again, this is not watercolour card. This is completely optional, something that you want to do. Um, and I simply picked up the quinacridone rose, but of course you could add this with pencil, with a, like a Copic marker, um, anything you like really. Um, you could use an acrylic paint if it suited you as well. Um, so if you wanted to add in a little bit of pink to me, just needed a little bit of something. Okay, so this is my cover page. Again, so you can see from the other side that the stems have just popped through there. And because I use all my pages in my journal, um, and it's a handmade journal um, that I make every year, um, I can do whatever I want, use whatever paper I get as creative as I like with my journal. Um, and I always do a watercolor for the journal and then I share that as a separate video with you because obviously that watercolor takes quite some time. But it is a little bit of a gift to myself as well because, as I said, it just comes from my imagination. Whatever um, strikes me that I would like to create for that month, um, what theme I want to do. Um, so I simply have just popped some double-sided tape on there, obviously taking a bit of care that once that paper is lowered, that's just a craft paper, brown craft paper I had, um, he's not going to be able to pull it back off once it's stuck. 
um, and then I've added some tape because this page is going to sit flat um, I've added some tape here hidden at the top and the bottom so that the page stays nice and straight and then I'll just go back and add a punches to those to the brown craft paper so that can go straight back into my journal um, so as you can see super simple and then I'll turn this over and turn that into my month at a glance so once again I'll link that for you below in case you're interested and I also decided I wanted to round the corners on my card and just soften it like my soft little cuddly bunny and then I did the same with the craft paper. I will link the punch for you below as well because it was quite hard to find it. You wouldn't think it would be, but it's such a simple punch just to round your corner. But yeah, and I use it a lot in my journal. Okay, so here's me just adding that same brown craft paper, which will cover that little, you can't see very much with the, um, the stems, but it's a little bit of detail there. So if you were going to give this card, it would be nice, obviously, to cover that up. So I've just put a little bit of double-sided tape on the top. Like I'm totally eyeballing this as well. I haven't measured it um, exceptionally to stress about where it's going to sit. Um, I measured the card, the paper, cut it, and then just put it in place how I think it looks like it's sitting nicely. Okay, so I did the centre first, and then I've just added the tape at the top. Now I'm not going to do it at the bottom, because when you fold the paper over in the card, it will buckle, be warned. It needs to be a little bit loose, so it has some movement on the other side. Otherwise, either you can't open the card or it buckles when you close it. Not ideal. Okay, so here you can see the, the completed bunny cards, the completed Valentine's cards. And I'm wishing you just the most wonderful day, however you choose to spend it. Um, remember to take care of those you love and take care of you as well because people love you. Thanks so much. See you soon.